Hello and welcome to part one of a five-part series we will be making DIY projects. Let's get started. If you do not have the tools to cut this, Home Depot will cut this for you for free. For this first DIY project, we will be making a heavy-duty canning and cooling rack. I'm going to be duplicating this so I can have one in the vlogging room and leave this one in my kitchen. When I made this a few years ago, it was 24 inches long. I will give you a material list. I'm going to go cut these six boards 24 inches long. If you will notice, I put all the labels and the bad ends all on one end because these will be the braces here. I promise this is so easy. And you can make it longer if you want. I found this just to be perfect because it sits inside a porcelain tray that I use all the time. I'm going to measure 24 inches on just one because I'm going to cut them all at once. I'm going to make a 24 inch tick mark. I'm going to use this as my guide. My husband doesn't work with clamps, but I do. Just want to show me. Yep, right on the mark. And we are back and that's where these are going to go lay a sticker side down I came in two inches from the edge now we will be putting the right side down because we need to put the cleats on the bottom I will use just one of these as a guide let's begin I'm going to come in two inches on this one, two inches on this one, two inches on this one, and two inches on this one, and I'm going to make a tick mark. And remember, we're working from the back side. These are where the cleats are going to go. You don't have to worry about lining this up right now. You're just going to be doing number one and number six. Take one of your cleats. Be mindful if it has stickies or anything on it, like this one. Let's just remember. You're going to pull this out and pull this one out until the ends are flush and you want to line up that tick mark. We are going to be gluing these down for extra stability if a staple should ever pull out. We're going to be using three quarter long staples because the wood is actually one inch thick and we do not want them to go all the way through from here into there. We're going to be adding Gorilla Glue for extra support just as a little backup. You don't have to, but I highly recommend if you're going to be making this and using it for 20 years, add a little glue. I'm just going to give a little bead. I don't want it to overflow. Smush it in. You want to line up with your tick mark. Very important to have this outside flushed. This is an air gun. I have the compressor out in the hall. This is going to shoot these three quarter inch staples and it's on the tick mark. I'm going to do the same thing to this end. I'm going to come down to this one. It's flush and on the tick mark. I'm going to come down here. Flush, same thing. So let's go ahead and put glue on these just for a moment. And you want to eyeball to draw a line down the middle. Doesn't have to be straight. You can use a ruler. This is basically where you want to keep your glue. You can clean up the excess with a damp paper towel or rag. We have to space these out. We also need this though. I do eyeball it. I think I have a pretty good eye for it. I'm just gonna do about the same distance in between. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And I'm gonna work my way up. I'm gonna offset these like this. Two should be enough in each one. Now you might have to stop and reposition. It's okay, I caught it, it's all right. Do not go too near the edge, it will split. 
trust me, if I can do this, you can do this. Super easy. You can cheat like I do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this. This will be my little glue line. This is the center. I do my little glue. If you want to be precise, it's 11 and a quarter if you want to be precise. I mean, if you are going to measure, it's best to do it before you put the cleats on. I don't really care. I was just showing you. I'm going to eyeball mine. Tick mark. Tick mark. Take this away. Make sure it's flush. Oh, it moved, but that's all right. We'll move this in. Line it back up. Make sure you date it. Write your name on it and the date. Someday that'll be worth a million dollars. There. You have it. You can take a little light sanding block and you can just nick these burrs off. I do not seal this. There's no need to seal it. I love this dark, gorgeous color. This was once this. This is what its beautiful color comes back to. After this is eight years, this is eight years old. We've never had to restaple it, re-glue it, never cracked. I run this under hot water, <laughs> dry it right away. I've never had a problem with this. And I use this literally almost every single day. There you have it. And we are on project number two. This one, no power tools whatsoever. I went to Lowe's today. I bought these six boards. They were already pre-cut on the shelf, 24 inches. They may not be perfect, but Again, we are not using power tools. This is if you do not have power tools, you will go buy these. The cut sheet and all the materials will be listed at the blog and you may print them out. I did buy one 48 inch board. That was this one. We had one 48 inch board. I brought it to the person at the cut counter. He cut them into four equal pieces. One of these I pushed aside. It will be waste. We will not be using it. These will be cleats. So he made two cuts. That's all this whole thing was. We have not touched a power tool and we will not. These were already pre-cut. We bought one board and had him make two cuts. They did not charge us. And the one was for waste. As we did on the last one, I made a two inch tick mark from the end. Two inch tick mark, two inch tick mark, two inch tick mark. I put my board here on the tick mark. I drew a line. I put this cleat here, drew a line. That tells me in between here is where I'm going to be putting the glue. For this project, we are going to beef up the glue because we are only using nails, not the brad nail that we used last time. You will need a little bit more stability with this, but that's going to be fine. So let's get started. Just like we did the last one, we're only gonna wear, worry about one and six. We're gonna use this as our guide because that is going to be the width of this cooling rack. We'll just do one now. If this spills over, which it probably will ooze out the side, little paper napkin, little damp water, you do not want it soaked, Wipe it up immediately, it will be fine. And if you hear my great Pyrenees barking, she's nocturnal. It's 7.30 at night and she wonders what I'm doing up here. This is a project I found that I could not do by myself. The Brad Nailer, no problem. With this one, with hammering it in, I am going to need my husband's assistance, so he is going to hold. I drew a little line, which, in case you, in case you had, you know, your tick mark and you got confused, which I do. I draw a little line. That means you want your cleat on this side of that arrow. We're only going to be working with one real quickly. He's going to be my eyes over there, and he's also going to help me hold it. Thank you, Raymond. I will leave all the sizes and all the materials that you will need in the cut sheet. Do not worry about this. 
This is not even gonna be attached. This is just my support to hold these up for me. I'm going to do a nail, a nail, and a nail, and a nail. Work near me, I'm on the line, and it slides a lot because we're using more glue and I'm flush. This is what I like to use. You may call it silly, but it saves my fingers. You wanna get it flush, and I'll tell you later how we're gonna remedy this so it doesn't scratch your counters. Do not go near the edge, it will split. You wanna come in a little bit. We want it flushed and on the line. Now we're gonna come over here and do this again. The arrow. We're gonna make sure it's flushed. Like last time, I'm gonna remove this, leave these right in place. Doesn't matter if they're lined up. We're gonna give a good, good application of glue. And if you forget, little arrow. So you want your glue to go between here, and you don't have to worry about the tick mark. There is no tick mark. A little more generous than last time from the first project. You want to space them out as much as you can. Just eyeball them. You'll be able to move them once you lay it down. It won't, as long as these are approximately the same. This way the glue won't squish out between them. I'm going to use this as my guide. Again, I'm going to eyeball them. Oops. Cut. It's hard to see when you're using these. And it really doesn't matter the pattern. We're going to be covering this up. I will show you that in a moment. Just like last time, we will tick it at 11 and a quarter. And this is the side that we're going to be putting the cleat on. If you push down too hard, it will lock it. Hopefully they'll be flush. Well, look at that. Blushed. Raymond's going to hold it again for me. I'm going to put one in one end and one in the other end just to secure it so it doesn't move. Here's one of those projects that Jersey always says, super easy, super forgiving, I promise. No one will be at your dining room table with their tape measure out. Now, before I go and finish this up, this is when I'm gonna take the time that I had mentioned in my last video on project one. Take your little sanding block, especially the ones from the store. You want to get all the burrs off. Run it down. Do two sides at once. Don't worry about this, but you can do the outside edges. You will obviously spend a lot more time on this than what I'm doing. I just want to get this video done for you. Now here is when you will need to get a damp paper towel, not soaking, damp, take some of the water off, wipe any glue up. Now go ahead, and if you're going to be giving it as a gift, if you already know who's going to be your recipient, go ahead and fill it in. I'm not giving mine away, so I'm just going to sign it. When you use the air nailer, they are countersunk. They will not scratch your counter. Do not even have to put anything on this. I have never put mine and I have not seen a scratch. But with these, and if you have nice countertops, even if you don't, wood, granite, marble, this will scratch it. I am a quilter, so I always have wool available. 
you can buy felt, you can buy wool. You will measure this. It's approximately 11 and three quarter. Wool and felt is very forgiving. So even if it's too long, you can push it back and you can actually shrink it. If you cut it too short, you can definitely stretch it into place. What I'm going to do, so I cut these one and a half by 11 and three quarter, roughly. You can go to Hobby Lobby, Joann's, if you do not quilt or sew, they have pieces that are 12 inches long. Just cut it with scissors if you want, rotary or whatever. I'm going to be using the same Gorilla Wood Blue. I'm going to give a generous amount down the center. Okay, I'm going to use my finger. That's the only way I could think of. I didn't want to use a foam brush that can't compost down. I didn't want to use a regular brush that I would have to wash out, so I used my finger. Please use what you need to use that you feel safe using. It's something I've done my whole life. I'm still living, I'm still here. The wool, get one side flushed and you can either stretch it or squish it so it gets a little bit shorter and you just keep manipulating it. That one was a hair too long, so pinch it in between, clean up any extra glue, a little bit of pressure. Same thing here again. You want to get those edges, that's more important than anywhere, the edges. You don't want them to start picking up. As long as you make a thin coating like this, a lot of it will not seep out the edges. And if you're going to be using a wool or a felt, highly suggest brown or black. It will hide the dirt. If you use white, you might have these little dots show through. If you pre-plan and buy enough material, especially if you cut it yourself, you could literally whip out six of these within an hour, put them in your closet, and through the year give them as gifts. Sign your name real small, then up here you can write to or from. What a gift that would be for somebody to be able to use every single day. I don't think there's a day that goes by that I do not use mine. I use it every single night. It's very, very good for cast irons, heavy pots, if you can, like I do. Right, we have one more exciting project to do along the same guidelines. I will give you a sneak peek if you are interested in continuing to watch. How cute is that? I, I will give you the material list also to make this along with this one. This one was also, if you're doing the Lowe's project, you will also buy extra boards and have them cut. None of this was done with a power tool. It was done the same way as this one. Home Depot, uh, look up ahead in project one. It will tell you what to use from the leftover waste that you had and what more you will need to buy. But both Home Depot and Lowe's project, Home Depot with power tools, Lowe's without a power tools, you can build both of these under an hour in an afternoon. On the rack here on the right, we had 55 pounds of tallow. It did not budge or bow one inch. If you have made it this far, thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, then over on the right, hit the all notification bell and you will be notified each time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for contributing to our community.